But first, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese announced today that Australian taxpayers would give $100 million to the World Health Organisation to help them manage the next global pandemic. I mean, they did such a great job with the last one. Why wouldn't we? Why would you actually give a failed organisation that features non-elected, non-representative people taxpayer money so that we can take our cues from them the next time a health emergency hits? I mean, you'd rather take your chances with the state premiers, wouldn't you? Or would you? Speaking of which, Anthony Albanese also announced today a Clayton's inquiry into Australia's COVID pandemic. I call it a Clayton's inquiry because it won't be a royal commission. So it won't have the power to compel people to give testimony and nor will it examine the actions of state or territory leaders. The Shadow Health Minister Anne Rustin spoke for many of us when she expressed her frustration at that decision. Probably the decisions of the states and territories were probably some of the most impacting in terms of, you know, the mental health that we've seen flow from it. You know, border closures between states where you had somebody on one side of the border not being able to go and visit a loved one who may have been dying, wasn't able to attend a funeral. The consequences of state and territory decisions were monumental. You've got to wonder if robo-debt demanded a royal commission, why wouldn't COVID demand a royal commission? I mean, we spent billions of dollars on the pandemic, and not only that, but civil liberties were trashed like they've never been trashed before. Remember this? OK, they're shooting. They're now shooting. They're now shooting people. You can hear the... Oh, my God. Caleb, when Anthony Albanese was asked why isn't there a royal commission into this to look at the actions of state and territory leaders, he said, no, no, this isn't about conflict. This is about working together. That's the first lesson no. of the pandemic. Who would he be talking about working with, Interesting, Caleb? isn't it? Well, he said, you know, we, we want this to be constructive, not destructive. Now, who would it be destructive towards? Oh, I don't know, people oh. like Dan, Dan Andrews. Andrews. You know, oh, oh. Mm. we couldn't possibly have them being investigated. I mean, what is the point? of having an inquiry if you don't look at the one group of people, the one mob, who actually had control during COVID. I mean, the powers that the, the Commonwealth had were around people coming in and out of the country. They had control of the uh, the, the borders. Uh, and, and on terms of those borders, they shut them. So that was the end of that question. There's not much to investigate there. We know we did that. Um, and then the next thing they could control was the vaccine rollout. And that was about it. The rest of it came down to the states. They couldn't control state borders. They couldn't control lockdowns. They couldn't control vaccine mandates. Mm -hmm. They couldn't control whether or not you could wear a mask when you went for a walk or, you know, whether you could uh, have an alcoholic beverage while you went on that walk or they couldn't control whether the playground was open or not. There is literally no point to this inquiry.